part two of this video series, we looked at preparing the financial statements. Today, we're going to look at preparing just the balance sheet, and we're going to look at how to do a classified balance sheet. What's the difference with the classified balance sheet and the one we did back in part two? Um, first of all, I know I explained that a balance sheet, and I'll reiterate it, uh, you always are going to start with every formal statement with the name of the company, the name of the statement, and the. In, for a balance sheet, it's the date. For the other financial statements, it's a period of time. All right? And on the balance sheet, this is sort of a reflection of the accounting equation. All right? We have our assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. Um, this is a balance sheet for family health care. Again, it's a uh, physician practice, doctor's practice. Um, the first thing, that's di one of the things that's different about the classified balance sheet is we have classified and grouped the assets. What is a current asset? What is a fixed asset? What's a current liability? So we have some different groupings in here, and that's why it's called a classified balance sheet. Assets are still assets, liabilities are still liabilities, and stockholders' equity is still stockholders' equity. Everything is in the same section. It's just giving us more information. All right, current assets are anything. Um, basically, it's a, anything that we are going to convert or use up within the year. So it's a short-term type of asset. I don't know any asset more um, used up within the year than cash. It's constantly coming in and out. Um, the next one I have to enter is accounts receivable. Accounts receivable are money that's owed to us by our customers, and usually it's like 30 days we're expecting to get a payment. So that would definitely be a current asset. Remember that year cutoff. Prepaid insurance, usually we don't pay our insurance premiums more than a year in advance. So that would be another type of current asset. And supplies, we generally don't buy supplies more than a year in advance. So all those things are current assets. Then um, we come down to this section on fixed assets. Now, I know we talked about accumulated depreciation in the last video in this series. Accumulated depreciation comes about as we record depreciation at the end of the period. And it accumulates and builds up over time. Someone once called it accumulated depression. and I just thought that was so funny because uh, we can understand how those things accumulate too, can't we? <laughs> just builds up. So... Um, the accumulated depreciation is always listed next to the asset after the asset that is being depreciated. In this case, it was office equipment. And we use the word less, less accumulated depreciation. It's coming out. Notice we're subtracting. So now we have to subtract because we have depreciation. Um, fixed assets are those things that we are going to use over time. It's going to last us more than a year. All right, so 8,500 minus the 160 gives us the 8,340. Land is the only asset, fixed asset, that we are not going to depreciate. In accounting, we do not depreciate land. Uh, it doesn't really wear out. And, and in some cases, I mean, if we have timber or uh, we're using it for agricultural purposes, it might not be as valuable. But you know, as a general rule, land uh, doesn't depreciate, and we don't depreciate it for accounting. We're not making any more of that. Um, and then, but we total to get our fixed assets. So here we added um, office equipment minus the accumulated depreciation, which is actually our net fixed assets, plus land to give us our total fixed assets. Then we add that to our current assets to give us total assets of 38,110. What is the value of doing this? Someone that's looking at the statements, uh, if they're wanting to lend us money, can see what do you have that you know you might be able to pay this bill back with. So banks are very interested, and in to get financing, uh, they're interested that we have another enough current assets to pay our current liabilities. So there's definitely a relationship between these two. Current liabilities also has that one-year rule. It's it's pretty simple. Current liabilities are anything that we owe uh, it, that's going to be due in less than a year. Um, accounts payable, again, those are 30-day type things, so we should be paying that. Wages payable, I don't know any employee that waits over a year for their wages, so that should always be current. And um, notes payable, 
We are going to be talking about notes in a future uh, video in this series. But if notes are due in less than a year, notes actually could be current or they could be a longer term liability. Also notice down over here we have unearned revenue. I talked about uh, unearned revenue in our last um, video. So again, we've listed all of our liabilities. That's a current liability that doesn't end in the word payable. Add them down. Then we have notes payable down here as well. So we had some that were due in, within the year and some that are longer. Also, when you're paying on a note, say it's a mortgage or something like that, there, if you're making monthly payments, you may have some of that that's, that's current and some of that that's long term. Anyway, together they form our total liabilities. And then down in our stockholders equity section, that really hasn't changed. We still have capital stock, retained earnings, and total stockholders equity. All right, and now we have a blank page. So if you will look at your handout, um, there's a problem here with the shoe shown company. Um, after all their accounts have been closed as of June 30, 2011, it says the balances of the selected ledger account for the shoe shown company are as follows. All right, notice that these are listed in alphabetical order, but that's not the way they're going to go on our balance sheet. And I promise each one of these will either be an asset, a liability, or um, a uh, stockholder's equity account. So <clears throat> again, I recommend when, you, when you're starting out to uh, learning, the, the, the best way to do is just look at these accounts and say, okay, what type of account is it? And that will tell me where I need to put it on my balance sheet. Okay, so if we look at accounts payable, ends in the word payable, so it's a debt, so that would be in with our liabilities. Accounts receivable, a lot of people get these mixed up, but they're exactly the opposite. Receivable is money people owe us. What's an accounts payable to me is an accounts receivable to someone else. So accounts receivable, money people owe us, is an asset or a resource owned by the business. But what did I say about accumulated depreciation earlier? It's accumulating over time, and it's subtracted, right? It's subtracted up by the fixed asset that it goes with on the balance sheet. That's why we call it a contra asset, but if you're labeling it here, it's still an asset. <clears throat> the capital stock account definitely goes down in stockholder's equity. Cash, I think we've been talking about cash for a while. Cash, resource owned by the business, so it would be an asset. What about equipment? Also, a resource owned by the business would be an asset. What about prepaid insurance? We talked about this in the last video series. Um, prepaid insurance is insurance we've paid in advance, and it would be an asset until it, it is, uh, expires. Prepaid rent. What about prepaid rent? Any prepaid account would be an asset. Again, it's been paid in advance. Somebody actually owes us something. If our building burns down, they have to give us the money back, right? So it's an asset until we use it up. Retained earnings, well, that would definitely go with the stockholder's equity, right? Salaries payable. Salaries payable ends in the word payable, so it would be a liability. Supplies, resource owned by the business would be an asset. Now, what about this unearned fees? Unearned fees is a liability because it's money we've collected in advance from our customers but we have not provided the service yet.